It's been reported within the last few days that there is a nuclear power renaissance going on in Europe, that apparently there is renewed demand for uranium. But here's the thing. The biggest nuclear power plant currently being built in the UK is now three years behind schedule and is estimated to have a cost blowout of $3.5 billion. Now, in Germany, they're kind of wondering what's going on in the rest of Europe because in Germany, they just turned off all their nuclear power plants and they now have more than 50% renewables. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. The interesting decision here by the UK government to endorse nuclear power to, in fact, decide to quadruple their number of nuclear power plants over the next 10 years is being questioned by a lot of people who, well, have brains in their head. Europe's nuclear power renaissance is baffling experts. The UK plans to quadruple its nuclear electricity generation and invest in domestic production of hydrogen fuel while extending the life of existing power plants. France, despite German pressure for renewables, is set to construct 14 nuclear reactors to meet its electricity demands and to end fossil fuel reliance. Sweden and Hungary are also expanding their nuclear capacities with Sweden lifting its reactor cap and Hungary continuing its large scale project. Now, getting back to the UK, the owner of the Hinkley Point C new nuclear power plant has blamed inflation, um, COVID and Brexit as it announced that the nuclear power plant project will be delayed by a further four years and cost three and a half billion US dollars more than what was originally planned. Now, this has actually happened for every nuclear power plant that's ever been built in the history of mankind. Costs have doubled minimum for all of them. And they've all had blowouts in terms of time scale for delivery. It takes a long time to build them. The plant in Somerset has actually been under construction for, well, nearly 10 years. Well, eight years to be correct. And it's expected to be finished now in 2031, meaning it will take 15 years to build. 15 years. With a cost of up to 35 billion. Actually, no, that's not true, I lie. That's 35 billion pounds, meaning 45 billion US dollars. Insane. However, the cost will be far higher than that once inflation is taken into account because the EDF is using 2015 prices, meaning the price will actually be closer to 55 billion US dollars for a single nuclear power plant. For some reason, a lot of European countries think, well, that's a good idea. Imagine how many solar farms and battery power stations you could build for that amount of money. Now, the latest in a series of setbacks represents a huge delay to the project's timescale. In 2007, the then EDF chief executive Vincent de Rivas said that by Christmas in, 2020, in 2017, turkeys would be cooked using electricity generated from atomic power at the nuclear plant. When the project was finally given the green light in 2016, the cost was estimated at around 20, 22 billion US dollars. Now it's going to blow out to around 55 billion, meaning estimated cost blowout of $33 billion. However, surprisingly, other countries in Europe are saying, well, you know, this is not so bad. We're going to build some more nuclear power plants as well. Several European powers are rapidly progressing plans to expand their nuclear energy sectors, despite a lack of support from major EU powers such as Germany. The UK has announced its biggest nuclear expansion in 70 years, as well as plans to extend the life of several facilities. France continues to back its long-standing approach to nuclear power, with plans to build several new reactors in the coming years. Sweden has voted in favor of a nuclear expansion, expanding its nuclear power sector, and Hungary is moving forward with the construction of a massive nuclear power plant as well. This month, the UK government announced plans to make the biggest expansion in British nuclear power in 70 years, aimed at enhancing energy security, they say, reducing consumer energy bills, and creating thousands of jobs. 
This move comes after the UK experienced greater energy volatility following the Russian invasion of Ukraine in 2022 and subsequent sanctions on Russian energy. But it does come as well at a time when the biggest wind farm, the biggest offshore wind farm in the world called Dogger Bank is now live and creating enough power for millions of homes in the UK. Now, the UK is planning on building small modular nuclear reactors as well. And there's a lot of hype around these modular nuclear reactors. I've made several videos on them. Will they work? Well, the truth is that no one really knows at this point because they haven't been built yet. There's only one prototype. Um, obviously, the cost blew out for that, as you can imagine. So the concept of small modular nuclear reactors, while it actually does sound very promising, is yet to be fully proven commercially in the real world. The UK hopes to increase electricity generation from nuclear sources by around four times. But this means it will increase to 24 gigawatts by 2050, which would meet a quarter of the UK's electricity demands. Now, at the same time, here in Australia, it, over in China, in many countries, like I said, such as Germany, enormous amounts of solar and battery storage are being built out at record numbers. And whilst the cost of nuclear power plants has actually grown over the past decade, the cost of solar has come down by approximately 90%. The same applies for battery pack prices. Battery prices, in fact, are tipped to reduce by an additional 50% by the middle of this year after the world's biggest battery company said that that's what they would do. And they'd pass on those discounts to their customers. Now, in addition to developing new nuclear power sites, the French energy major EDF recently started plans to invest a further $2 billion by 2026 to extend the life of its nuclear facilities. So France, Europe's nuclear energy powerhouse, plans to expand its nuclear capacity despite pressure from Germany to invest in renewable energy instead of nuclear projects. In March last year, France's parliament voted in favour of the government's nuclear investment plan with plans to build six new nuclear reactors. This month, the parliament will debate the possibility of increasing that figure to 14 new nuclear reactors. 14 would be an enormous addition. Now, they say this will meet the country's growing electricity demands. But, um, you know, I just don't see why it's a better option than renewables, which have come down in price so much over the past 10 years, and especially over the past 12 months. This supports France's aim, though, of reducing its reliance on fossil fuels from 60% to 40% by 2035. Now, many countries around the world are saying by 2035, they'll be 100%, 100% renew renewables. So they'll get rid of their fossil fuels completely by 2035. France seems to be uh, a bit behind. I mean, Germany is saying by 2030, they'll hit 90% renewable generation. Sweden's government is backing nuclear expansion as well, as its parliament approved a bill that outlines the construction of additional reactors. Prime Minister, the Prime Minister hopes to construct two new conventional nuclear reactors by 2035, although by 2035 he won't be in power, so you know it doesn't really matter for him whether or not that actually works. There was a previous cap of 10 nuclear reactors, but that has been lifted so that more can be built in Sweden. In Hungary, they're continuing the construction of a nuclear energy project. There's been substantial criticism of the country's ongoing energy ties with Russia, which has put pressure on several European companies, such as Germany's Siemens or France's Framatome, to quit the project. However, that project in Hungary is the largest nuclear project in Europe, and several companies have signed binding contracts to, to participate in the development and operation of the facility. So while some European countries are moving away from nuclear power in favor of renewable alternatives, several see the expansion um, as part of a green transition. They say that nuclear power is green and we should all embrace it and that renewables are they're just not as good. You guys know what I think about this. I think it's complete malarkey. It's ridiculous. But what are your thoughts? Let me know. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.